Our solar system is one of over 500 known solar systems in the entire Milky Way galaxy. The solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago when a cloud of interstellar gas and dust collapsed, resulting in a solar nebula, a swirling disk of material that collided to form the solar system. The solar system is located in the Milky Way's Orion star cluster. Only 15% of stars in the galaxy host planetary systems, and one of those stars is our own Sun. Revolving around the Sun are eight planets. The planets are divided into two categories based on their composition, terrestrial and Jovian. Terrestrial planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are primarily made of rocky material. Their surfaces are solid, they don't have ring systems, they have very few or no moons, and they are relatively small. The smallest and closest to the Sun is Mercury, which has the shortest orbit in the solar system at about three Earth months. Venus is the hottest planet, with temperatures of up to 867 degrees Fahrenheit due to an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and extensive lava flows. Next to this world of fire is a world of water, Earth. The water systems on this planet help create the only known environment in the universe capable of sustaining life. The last of the terrestrial planets, Mars, might have also supported life about 3.7 billion years ago when the planet had a watery surface and moist atmosphere. Beyond the four terrestrial planets of the inner solar system lie the Jovian planets of the outer solar system. The Jovian planets include gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The gas giants are predominantly made of helium and hydrogen, and the ice giants also contain rock, ice, and a liquid mixture of water, methane, and ammonia. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, sport ring systems, have no solid surface, and are immense. The largest Jovian is also the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter. Nearby is Saturn, the solar system's second largest planet. Its signature rings are wide enough to fit between Earth and the Moon, but are barely a kilometer thick. Past Saturn are the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The slightly bigger of these ice giants, Uranus, is famous for rotating on its side. Next to Uranus is Neptune, the outermost planet in the solar system and also one of the coldest. Orbiting the terrestrial planets is the asteroid belt, a flat disk of rocky objects full of remnants from the solar system's formation, from microscopic dust particles to the largest known object, the dwarf planet Ceres. Another disk of space debris lies much further out and orbits the Jovian planets, the icy Kuiper Belt. Apart from asteroids, the Kuiper Belt is also home to dwarf planets such as Pluto and is the birthplace of many comets. Beyond the Kuiper Belt is the Oort Cloud, a vast spherical collection of icy debris. It is considered the edge of the solar system since that is where the gravitational and physical influences of the Sun end.
after today's class with the introduction to the geology now first thing why i want to discuss with you people why geology because uh, you have lot of uh, subject to study in between that that is a one of the basic science which is uh, very much essential for the civil engineer why it is so why you need geology geology not only explains about the earth it also explains about the material what it is made up of and the construction material the earth surface how it is and the hydrological elements the movement of the cyclic movement of the water or the movement of the water in the earth and atmosphere and below the ground so not only that the geological problems we will come across with the engineering constructions so overcome from this particular uh, phenomena you must study the geology then why geology geology plays a very important role in the field of civil engineering i already explained what are the important role or what are the benefits that you will get in studying the geology it plays a very important role it provides the knowledge about the materials used for the construction what type of material see when you are looking into the civil engineering constructions nowadays the trend is changing the materials in the sense either it may be construction material and the raw material for the construction and the materials which is directly are ready for the constructions now when you look into the earlier, earlier days of development the floor is made up of mud gradually increased to cement the red oxide whatever they use uh, will be helpful for the uh, help as a flooring material next it is slowly the construction industry little bit move forward and uh, move with the uh, set of material called mosaics mosaic tiles for the flooring after this mosaics uh, in the mosaics also they you they they are using the materials like ceramic chips these particular materials slowly changed into ceramic tiles next it has moved to the vitrified tiles and simultaneously the age of another era has started that is use of the granites poor uh, use of granite they used one more material for the slabs kitchen slabs and uh, for the minor constructions that is kadapa stone or marbles now this is how the trend has changed and it has set a goal in construction industry it's the knowledge is helpful for constructing dams a very clear uh, statement here san francisco dam in southern california in 1928 it collapsed overall the dam construction the design of the dam design of the structure all engineers has taken lot of care but still this particular dam has failed due to the poor environmental consideration while constructing the dam the set of engineers they started studying the problems which are occurred in the poor construction of this particular dam they come realized that the poor 
geological knowledge of the engineer has caused the disaster so it is not only caused the death of the few people it is also damaged lot of dollars or economy of the country now geological geotechnical engineers need to needs knowledge about this subject for excavation work that is the digging work next its knowledge is required for foundation faults the faults are the one of sorry geological structures which is a very active seismic zone which create a problem for the engineering design whether it may be building whether it may be a huge construction like bridges or uh, tunnels or uh, dam wherever the fault is there even the floating reservoir if there is any fault it's primarily a seismically, seismically active zone for design of highway and roads uh, we must know the elevation that is the geomorphology etc uh, for the clear understanding of the geomorphology and its impact on these particular structures in construction of tunnels also we required a huge knowledge of geology because you will come across with different types of rock different types of strata different types of layers of rocks everything so without the knowledge of the geology you can't construct the tunnels if you are then you are causing to the disaster soil tests are done before any project that is to know the sbc soil bearing capacity uh, we will test now it's the knowledge helpful for river control and uh, shipping work uh, nature of soil materials can be found Uh, now this is again soil which is required for the construction if it is available nearby that can be utilized now uh, introduction to the geology what is geology definition says i have given the huge trailer but i have not given the exact uh, title now geology geo means earth logy means study this is a study of earth it deals with the study of origin age interior structure that is internal structure of the earth and the history of the earth evaluation and modification various surface features like rivers mountains and lakes material which is made the earth are earth is made up of certain materials study about these materials then its modification its adjustment its changes that has occurred in the earth and the animals which are inhabited on the earth collectively you will study in geology the main and allied branches of geology are physical geology mineralogy petrology structural geology historical geology paleontology economic geology that historical engineering allied branches are engineering geology mining geology geophysics ge geohydrology and geochemistry next physical geology this is also called as a dynamic geology or geomorphology physical geology deals with the different physical features of the earth such as mountain rivers lakes glaciers and volcanoes it also deals with the different changes occurring on the earth surface like marine formation of disappearance of river springs and lakes geomorphology is the one of the uh, main uh, branches in this geology where you will study the physical surface of the earth either it may be volcanic eruption either it may be earthquake uh, earthquake which brings the changes in the surface of the earth either it may be rivers either it may be blowing wind 
which brings the changes on the earth surface whatever the changes is brings on the earth surface that collectively will study in geomorphology sorry physical geology or geomorphology next natural phenomena like landslide earthquake and weathering will all study these things in the physical geology geological works of wind glacier rivers ocean oceans groundwater and other role of the molding of earth surface that means earth in the in the definition of geomorphology it says that all the processes in the earth surface are continuous it never stops it continues one by one it continues and the processes which are acting today it was there in the past also it will be there in the future also but the processes which are acting on the earth surfaces are in the earth which is working with the different intensities that is what it makes the con constant modification in the earth surface now mineralogy mineralogy which deals with the study of minerals mineralogy deals with the study of minerals their mode of formation composition occurrence types association properties uses etc their physical properties chemical properties optical properties everything you will combine the you will study in mineralogy next is uh, mineralogy uh, civil engineering point of view why you need this the strength and durability of the material depends on the chemical composition you know that the rock is a homogeneous is a, a mixture of inorganic substances it's made up of chemical composition the quartz and the marble resembles one another in shine color and appearance but quartz by virtue of its mineral composites it's very hard and tough strong and durable while the marble disintegrates and decomposition in the short period because of its mineral composition and properties yes this is a very good example when you look at the quartz its a hardness is 7 when you look at the calcite or the marble or the limestone its hardness is almost 3 to 4 the even i can take a example of uh, taj mahal where taj mahal is a structure which is made up of uh, marble seven wonder of the nation the world but here what happens when acid rain occurs this particular structure can have a throat it may get dissolved that is where the problem lies next is petrology petrology as as you know it's a petro means rock logos means study the petrology deals with the study of the rock what type of study will it carried out in the petrology the earth crust is also called as the lithosphere it is made up of different types of rock petrology deals with the formation structure texture composition occurrence and types etc now when you look into the formation that we call it as a petrogenesis how the rock has formed uh, how we will consider the human genesis like that only we will also consider as a petrogenesis how the rock formation processes and next is the structure now when the civil engineering field it has entered into the uh, uh, yeah here you can see the igneous rock metamorphic rock sedimentary rock igneous rocks it's formed because of volcanic eruption metamorphic rocks which is formed because of metamorphism of either sedimentary or igneous rock and sedimentary rocks are formed because of the sedimentation process now this are the small introduction in civil engineering point of view 
the composition and the texture characteristics of the rock primarily contribute their strength and durability rocks based on their stability can be used for foundation for dams tunneling and other construction materials hence it is the most important branch of geology branch of geology from civil engineering point of view and at the same time when you are looking into the petrology it's one of the toughest subject uh, toughest module in your syllabus when a civil engineer if you want to depend on the construction material and its durability and its strength he must know something about the petrology this is uh, not only in the construction material when you look into the choosing the flooring flooring material or when you are uh, choosing the flooring material at that particular point of time also the texture and the composition of the material and its strength and durability is also important when you are choosing the kitchen slab at that time the strength of that particular material should be more that's why dolerite is the one such material which will be used for the construction of the kitchen slab a black color stone which will be used in your kitchen that is mainly because it's a strong and durable next is structural geology now this is one of the very very important topic for the civil engineers structural geology the rocks which forms the earth crust undergoes a various deformation dislocations and disturbances under the influence of tectonic forces or tectonic plate forces the results in the occurrence of the geological structure like fold fault joint and unconformities in the rock the detailed mode of formation causes types classification and importance next is structural geology the fault fault is the dislocation where you can see here in the both the cases the road is subjected to the faulting there is a crack so the whole structure is disturbed here this is one of the major uh, branch of geology where uh, it uh, is very useful for the civil engineers next is the uh, folds you can see a uh, undulations in the rock due to the deformation of the rock now this is also have a similar uh, problem when you look into this particular structure where it is bulged up or bend it upward now when this tension or the pressure exceeds on this one this may break at any point of time so this is also one of the study of these kind of structures is also very important for a civil engineer geological structures modify the inherent physical characteristics of the rock rendering them more suitable or unsuitable for civil engineering purposes dam site sedimentary rocks with upstream dip provided a desirable geological setup while the same rock with downstream dip makes a geological setup undesirable this is very important because this particular structure what is present on the earth that is upstream bed and downstream bedding there is a two possibilities one is leakage of water from the dam structure in one condition in another condition there is a there may be a possibility of sliding of dam that's why this particular structure is very important in the case of civil engineering constructions historical geology the earth surface was always suitable conditions for the deposition of the sediments at some places or other places therefore there are sedimentary rocks on the earth representing the entire period of the earth history proper investigation of these rocks reveals the chronological sequences of the formation of the rock evolution migration and plants and animals life during the different periods of the earth history this kind of study of the earth history through the sedimentary rock is called as historical geology or it is also called as the stratigraphy stratigraphy means study of layers of earth here one thing what you have to remember is strata are the layers which depends on the meteorological condition of the earth it directly depends on the meteorological condition during that particular time the 
period of the hour. So, so this is one of the important uh, uh, aspects. If under favorable condition, animals and the plant life gets embedded in the sediments, it will be preserved partly or completely. Such a remnant of the ancient life preserved in the rocks by natural processes is known as fossil. De details of mode of formation of the fossils, their types, occurrence, etc. from the subject matter of paleontology, it is not much important for civil engineering point of view. But one thing what we have to remember is present is the key to past. So this is very important. Economic geology. Economic geology is the, uh, no, uh, we are see, there are economic minerals also which plays a very important role in the economy of the country. Like that only, some of the minerals which are, uh, uh, controls the economy of the country, gold, silver, platinum, etc. So minerals can be grouped into the rock forming minerals and the economic minerals. Some of the economic minerals like talc, graphite, mica, asbestos, Gypsum, magnetite, diamond are useful as a raw materials in this in some industry. Some others like hematite, chromite, galena, pyrolocyte are used for a, ore extraction of various metal. So this is what I uh, would like to say in this economic geology. The prosperity of the nation depends on a, depends to an large extent of rich reserves of economic mineral deposits. That's what. It controls the economy of the country. The Gulf countries are rich because of their oil deposits. South Africa is rich because of its gold and diamond deposit. It deals with the mode of formation, occurrence, classification, association, varieties, concentration, properties and uses, etc. It is related to the economic important. It is not related to the civil engineering. And next is uh, engineering geology. This is one of the important uh, branch of geology which, uh, which deals with the construction. This uh, deals with the application of geological knowledge in the field of civil engineering for execution of the safe, stable and economic construction like dams, bridges and tunnels. Next is uh, mining geology. This deals with the application of the geological knowledge in the field of mining. A mining engineer is interested in the mode of extent of occurrence of the occurrence of wars, their association, tenor, properties, etc. It is also necessary to know the other physical parameters like depth, direction, inclination, that is the depend strike of the rock, thickness, and the ore bodies. So not only in the mining geology, in the uh, civil engineering aspect also, you must know the dip and strike of the rock for your engineering construction. This is the one of the open pit mining, what you can see here uh, in this particular uh, photo. Next is uh, geophysics. The study of the physics properties like density, magnetism of the earth, it is subdivided into in the electrical properties also it is subdivided into the pure physics and exploration of geophysics pure geophysics deals with the general aspect of the earth as a whole and exploration uh, geophysics deals with the study of upper layer of the earth crust in order to solve the civil engineering problems and locating oil gas and groundwater resources exploration and estimation of ore resource depth now, when you look into the earth, uh, it's divided into different layer, crust, mantle, core, inner core, outer core, middle core, whatever you call. Uh, next is uh, the groundwater condition, soil, groundwater con contamination, exploration, geophysics, uh, salt water, groundwater radioactive waste, mineral deposits, uh, geothermal reservoirs, hot sources, mining, power plant, hot springs, acid mining, then uh, aquifers, natural gases, methane, hydrocarbon, oil, etc. These are all collectively comes under uh, 
वन स्लाइड जियो हाइड्रोलॉजी दिस मे ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ हाइड्रो जियोलॉजी इट डील्स विथ द अकरेंस मूवमेंट एंड द नेचर क्वालिटी एंड द क्वांटिटी ऑफ द ग्राउंड वाटर इन एन एरिया द ब्रांच इज क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू द जियोलॉजी बिकॉज द वेरी एक्सटेंस मूव एक्जिस्टेंस मूवमेंट ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर आर डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द पोरासिटी परमिएबिलिटी स्ट्रक्चर टेक्स्टर एंड कंपोजिशन ऑफ द ग्राउंड वाटर एंड अंडरग्राउंड रॉक्स सो दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द एरिया नाउ रिचार्ज एरिया डिस्चार्ज एरिया द रिवर विल बी डिस्चार्जिंग द वाटर एज ए स्ट्रीम देन वाटर टेबल विल बी देयर एंड Uh, aquifers are there uh, it will be um, using uh, the uh, the water will be up uh, taken away from the uh, open wells bore wells uh, there are confined aquifer and confined aquifers etc then geochemistry this is the branch is related more recent and deals with the occurrence distribution abundance mobility etc of the different elements on the earth crust it is not important for civil engineering point of view but still geo if you want to study the geochemical aspects uh, are the um, uh, quality of the water which is very much essential for the civil engineers also estimation of chloride fluorine everything that comes in the geochemistry uh, next is scope of geology geology provides the necessary information about the construction material at a site it is used as a construction of building dams tunnels reservoirs highways and uh, bridges geological information is the most important in planning planning stage design phase and construction phase of an engineering project uh, that means it can you can you cannot deviate or you cannot neglect this particular branch of the science uh, because which provides a host or the place for the construction you can't construct an any building within the air but you have to construct a building within the land if you know about the land and the soil bearing capacity and the uh, geological structure which is present in that area which will very helpful for the stable construction and the sustainable construction and the materials of the construction which is very uh, which is available very near to you the transportation cost which is required for the materials to transport from one place to the another place will be reduced and not only that it reduces the time of the construction also the materials which are chiefly available in the uh, surrounding areas which reduces the cost of the construction so these are all keeping in his mind next we will move to the next slide geology is useful to know the method of mining of rocks and mineral deposits on the earth surface and subsurface again without the economics without the economy the uh, the government will not uh, or uh, the nation will not grow for this growth or the for this sustainable growth the exploration of the minerals or rocks which are very essential economic minerals which are which are the bone of the country either it may be gold deposits either it may be platinum deposit or either it may be uh, silver deposits geology is useful for supplying storage and filling up of the reservoir with water storage and no yeah uh, civil engineering construction which will help uh, to restore the water or the hold the water in the earth surface everywhere the earth is not uniform everywhere the rainfall is not same R store and use is the major concept if you are not storing the water in the uh, areas which are very dry which reference to our college area or nearby areas which are very dry dry areas drought is the major threat for us in such a condition the sustainable uses is only through the construction of reservoir check dams etc or uh, storing this water in the tanks is very much essential for the sustainable development in the villages or the cities this is the only subject which gives the information about the earth surface 
that is the geomorphology or whatever you call it as it provides a systematic knowledge about the earth surface the importance of the geology in the uh, civil engineering before constructing the roads bridges tunnel tanks reservoirs building uh, building selection of the site is important for, uh, from the point of suitability of the foundation now if your foundation is stable your building is stable if your foundation is stable your reservoir is stable if your foundation is stable your bridge will be stable or your pavement is stable then only the roads will be stable now this is very important when you know the ground conditions the geological structures which are present in that area which is very much helpful for the construction of the construction projects geology provides systematic knowledge of the construction materials and their properties now not only construction material we all previously explained in the previous slide i have explained but uh, when you move on to the next slide it says that construction material and its properties the property construction material property if it is a durable it is a sustainable its a strength is more then it will be useful for the construction and uh, the material availability it is also very important the earlier there was a river sand now there is no river sand it is a m sand now when the technology improves you have to improve the construction material where it is again manufactures and nobody will going to manufacture anything it is a quarry dust mixed with a certain proportion of the uh, graded uh, pebbles or the mixture of the sand with the different grain size and then he will provide it to you because uh, the coarser sand will hold uh, firmly the knowledge about the nature of the rock in tunneling and construction of roads the nature of rock in tunneling is very much important because when you are constructing a hole or a tunnel in a rock the strength of the rock is very important because the whole area which will be experience experience the small vibrations during the movement of the vehicle which may disturb the stability of the rock so hard rocks will provide a harder construction sites and different types of undulations or the deformation of the rock also helpful for the construction of the tunnel and the roads the foundation problems of dams bridges buildings are directly related with the geology of the area where they are be built are to be built that means there are two things when you are constructing a dam there is a one is dam and another one is a reservoir when dam is there that particular structure which lies on the particular geological strata when you look into the reservoir reservoir which holds the dam and the water where if any geological structure lies there which may lead to the earthquake and the leakage of water from the reservoir this has to be keep it in your mind if it is a uh, syncline fold and anticline fold inclined bed it all depends on which type of construction you are doing and whether it supports or not that has to be studied properly or investigated with the geophysical technologies the knowledge of ground water is necessary in connection with excavation work water supply irrigation and many other purposes excavation work why it requires i think i was watching some of the um, webinar series uh, i just felt a one place where retrofitting has done for the uh, engineering building the retrofitting uh, for the engineering structure has done in some parts of kerala where this particular uh, structure is built in the banks of the river when this particular structure is built in the river bank 
the water seepage has entered into the excavation site now when the water is entering into the excavation site so your construction it cannot be carried out there that means the presence of the ground water you have to look into taken care when you are going for the excavation work then at the same time irrigation purpose also the uh, the study of the contour and the damages which can cause us to the con uh, water supply and where to build the aqueduct everything that planning has to be done with the help of the geologist a small uh, passage or construction of a, a small aqueduct somewhere in the ground which can be very helpful for transporting a uh, water for um, numerous kilometers or number of kilometers uh, from the reservoir the knowledge of erosion transportation and deposition by surface water helps in the soil conservation and river control see when a area which is subjected to the severe soil erosion will lead to the collapse of the land or the it also decreases the fertility of the soil and when this particular action is in the geological action is going on which results in the uh, formation of gullies or uh, trenches next is geological maps and selection sections help for considerably in planning many engineering projects geological maps of selection and considerably planning of many engineering projects these are the preliminary maps are the guiding maps for the civil engineers or any of the engineer or any of the person who will go for the construction of the any huge construction or the engineering construction either building or anything the these maps will guide him where i have to construct and how i have to construct what are the geological problems are the structural problems are the um, i am i am speaking only in the uh, uh, context of uh, geological structure not in others uh, uh, context and uh, planning proper planning and reduction in the cost of the building or any other engineering construction if the geological features like fault joints bed folds are uh, found they have to be suitably treated hence the stability of the rock structure important now this this particular technology that is called as a land improvement techniques if any of the structure or any of the places which is filled with the in the geological structures that will disturb the your engineering structures the stability has to be being or enforced into the rock then only your engineering construct and the building will be very much useful uh, stable pre geological survey of the area concerned reduces the cost uh, concerned reduces the cost of the planning work that is what i said it reduces the proper planning is sorry it reduces the cost of the engineering uh, construction if you are uh, well planned now i will just give you the simple example you have to the preliminary work in the construction is excavation when you go for the excavation after your design everything is ready when your go drawing is ready when you go for the excavation work now the problem starts your area which is okay there are two things one is ground water condition if you don't know the ground water condition what exactly you will do you simply go and you will excavate it when you excavate what happen water with the ground water table is at the top of this uh, touching to the top of the surface automatically what happen if you ex excavate for uh, one or two feet the water will get into the your uh, uh, excavation uh, uh, place so uh, further you can't go for the excavation then you have to pump the water again it increases the cost of the construction okay fine that is one case now when you are uh, excavating you will find a huge rock that you have not studied this huge rock if you have prim primarily if you have surveyed or if you, at that time what happen you would have come across with this particular rock this anomaly now for removing this rock you have to use the uh, machineries blasting 
etc. Again, it increases the cost of the building. Next is general geology. Any rock which is hard and strong, it may be decided when it is exposed to the atmosphere, ultimately making the rock fit to be at the site of foundation or to be used as a construction material. Details of the of response of different minerals which constitute the rock will give the proper understanding of the weathering phenomena. Hence, the weathering of rock is studied in general geology. This is how uh, when you are uh, looking into this particular aspect in the general geology, you, you will going to study some of the general aspects of geology. Weathering is one of the such aspect where it reduces the strength of the rock or which is also helpful for the formation of soil. Now, geological agents is one of the concepts. I think it is not in the first module, but still we can go ahead with this. Uh, it is in the second module. Uh, let's see, I will reduce my burden in there, in that particular module. And I will continue here only. The natural forces which are responsible for the visible change on the earth's surface are called as geological agents. That means the natural, it should be natural. That is blowing wind, earthquake, volcanoes, Tornadoes, running water, running leisure, all these are con considered as the natural forces which are responsible for the changes on the earth's surface. Not only this, rainfall, meteorological aspects. Based on their origin, these, uh, these natural forces can be grouped into two. That is exogenesis geological agent or endogenesis uh, Exogenous geological agents with the agent which ori or, uh, originated on the surface of the earth or acts above the earth's surface work out slowly but steadily and erase topographic irregularities that is ups and downs on the surface. This geological work is a way in systematic that is commencement with the erosion and is followed by the transportation and deposition. Next is exogenous geological agents. The erosion process causes the disappearance of a landmass like hill. The deposition process causes the disappearance of the depressed land like mass like pit, lakes and sea. Rivers, wind, glaciers, tides and waves of the sea are typical examples of exogenous group of agents. Now, exogenous geological agents, types of erosion, that is the soil erosion which may cause uh, and river uh, uh, curving a valley. Uh, next is uh, the coastal erosion. Uh, it is cutting the coastal areas. Uh, it is resulting in the sea cliffs. Uh, uh, wind blowing wind uh, will remove the uh, material from one place to the another place. Uh, boulders are the glaciers which bring the... Um, particles from the top of the hill and it is brought it to the um, low lying areas at the valley alluvial it will result in the alluvial fans and alluvial cones next is uh, exogenous geological agents which originates uh, below the earth surface uh, the Himalayan rivers, that is Ganga, Indus and Brahmaputra, sorry, it is exogenesis only, Himalayan rivers, endogenesis I have not traveled, okay. Uh, Brahmaputra physically transport 1 million tons of sediment daily. That means it is 1 million tons from the large Himalayan belt to the Bay of Bengal. Or Indian, um, Arabian Sea. West coast, uh, southwest monsoon winds transport over 130,000 1, tons of salts particle annually from run of Kutch towards the Rajasthan. Glaciers also do work of such magnitude even they are capable of transporting huge boulders many meters in diameter. 
Next is uh, exogenous agent, erosion of rocks, transportation of sediment, deposition of the sediments. In, in hills, due to the erosion, rocks are broken down into a smaller pieces uh, which are transported and deposited in a depression. That means the ero eroded material has transported to the some other place and it is deposited in a particular suitable depo deposition sites and uh, after the deposition it will result in the diagenesis and lithification process and it will result in the formation of a rock or uh, new material. Endogenous geological agents, the nature, origin and functions of endogenous geological agents are principal opposite to the exogenous geological agents. They originate the earth below the earth works suddenly and create topographic irregularities. Volcanoes, earthquake, volcanoes, earthquake, groundwater and tectonic forces are the typical example of this endogenous geological agents. That is one of the example of the volcano. Now I'll just move on to the weathering of rock. What is weathering? What is weathering? The process by which the rocks are broken down and decomposed by the action of the external agencies such as wind, rivers, rain, temperature, changes is called weathering. Now in simple definition, physically, de physically disintegrate and chemically decomposition of the rock due to the geological agents is called as weathering. In very simple words, physically disintegrate, that is broke down into the small pieces, chemically decompose, take a salt, put it in water, what happens? Salt will dissolve, that is the decomposition of the material. And it will be re-precipitated and it forms in the new form. But weathering has initiated, it disintegrates. That this is the powerful uh, um, process that acting in the earth. That is classified into mechanical weathering, that is physical weathering of rock, chemical weathering of rock and biological weathering of rock. Uh, again, biological is divided into biophysical and biochemical. Mechanical weathering, the process involved in the breakdown of the rock into smaller pieces due to the natural forces like waterfall, landslide, etc. The different types of mechanical weathering are forge wedging, expansion and contraction, thermal expansion, effects of vegetation. Forge wedging, the presence of the water in the cracks of the rocks freezes during the night time and melts during the daytime. This freezes of the Water involves an increase in the volume because of the which walls of the cracks are wedged ultimately and results in the breakdown of the rock. That is formation of avalanches. This is the frost wedging. What happened in the initial stage? It enter into the joints. Then it the cracks are widened because when it, uh, the ice formation takes place, volume of water increases. Due to this reason, what happens? The cracks between the two cracks which is formed in the rock, it widens. Due to this, rock will get defragmented. Rock with a crack and the entry of the rock freezes and expands the crack. And ultimately, one day, it breaks down into the pieces. This is how the approach wedging will take place. Expansion and contraction processes. The solar radiation causes the heating which results in the thermal expansion during the day and daytime and drops in the night time. Night time causes the contraction. The expansion and the construction are confined only to the surface layer of the rock and results in the fracture. That is called as a thermal expansion. 
Due to the thermal expansion in the contraction, what happens during the daytime, the solar uh, wind, it, solar uh, radiations which heat the surface of the rock. And when it absorbs the energy, it uh, expands and during uh, the night time, it radiates the energy from uh, its surface. So, uh, what happened? It becomes, it started becoming cooling. Once it cooled down, then it uh, uh, breaks into a uh, small pieces because of the contraction and the expansion of the uh, rock. Next one is uh, expansion and contraction weathering. Okay. Next is effect of vegetation. No, I, I need not want to touch here. I will end my class here. And the next class, I will uh, again go with the mechanical weathering of rock. Uh, thank you for your uh, patient listening. Uh, thank you.